الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله a very big comment was left uh, perhaps it's a question as well but I felt it was worthy of addressing and it is in reference to a lot of the fitna that someone or people in general have witnessed uh, with many of the du'at of Salafia or the du'at who claim Salafia uh, depending upon their status as individuals. So the question or the comment was, I understand what you're saying, brother, and respect your views. However, come and witness what's happening in the UK. Unfortunately, there are so many behaving like cults and gangsters Manchester, Birmingham, Luton, and London are just some to name. I can't help but say there definitely is an element of strict conformity expected from its followers. Abuse, name-calling, infighting, boycotting, guilt-tripping, sanctioning each other, policing one another, calling other Muslims, Kafirs, Mushrikeen, is abs it's absolute madness. Some of those leading the herds are unlearned, self-appointed wannabe sheikhs like Abu Khadija making heaps of money from the vulnerable. They basically created a ghettoization of Muslims who can no longer think for themselves for fear of being castigated, crucified, and branded a deviant. There is so much emphasis that sisters don't work, brothers don't mix with the kuffar, hate the kuffar, encourage that their children are taken out of schools, education is destroyed, with no encouragement to better yourselves, get an education, earn money, open businesses, generate wealth, and better our environments. Instead, we have sham marriages, sisters on welfare, brothers on social handouts, children growing up hating Muslims, non-Muslims. It's a real mess. And the worst part is that they're in absolute denial. How do you deal with a problem when they don't think there is a problem? And if you challenge the minhaj, you could potentially be hospitalized. The common sense, the maturity, the advancements, forward thinking is simply void. It's absent. It just, it's just more of the same rhetoric, same lectures again and again. And again, rocking everyone back to sleep. More poverty, more unemployment, more friction, more divisions, encouragement, uh, encouraged by certain people fearing they, they'd lose followers to other groups. So then they begin name calling. People come to the Dawah to enlighten themselves, learn and follow the correct path and be allowed to get on with their lives. Instead, we have a system that's been true, that's been truly hijacked. Their attitude is, it's our way or the highway. Massive comment. So much to say. Wililah alhamd, our scholars are dealing with these issues. And some of the tulab al-ilm are dealing with these issues. And what I've seen is a trend among some of the newer du'at of trying to clean up a lot of the mistakes that have been made in the past. And so I'm just going to address a few things to the best of my ability. Uh, as far as the brother Abu Khadija, uh, I have never listened to him. I've heard his voice a few times, uh, some short clips. And we already know uh, a lot of the controversy around Salafi publications and his role in that organization. And the statements of various scholars, some who praise or consider them trustworthy and others who do not and who criticize them from Ahl Sunnah. So that is not the purpose of uh, or things that I want to deal with and get into, but I'd rather stick with some of the core problems we've had with the dawa and why this mess has and what i mean by mess why we have such a messy situation now and a lack of progress and as i said i've talked to many and i've known many of du'at from what i could say would be the old school and some from the newer school and newer school meaning that more recent graduates going back to the West that have studied in Saudi Arabia, studied in Yemen, and studied in other places. And so they have a new, fresh take on how to deal with contemporary issues. And they have the blessed 
opportunity to benefit from the mistakes of those who are elder to them. And so we see that there's a lot of positive going on as well. I see this in some of the brothers, uh, some of the many brothers that I've known coming out of Medina and other places around the world, not just in the West, but around the world. And I know many Do'at for the years that I was in Medina, approximately seven years. So I know a lot of brothers who graduated came and went. With that being said, some of the problems and why this mess before we can talk about how to clean up some of it. In essence, some of the big problem is, is that in the past, there wasn't the same exposure to knowledge as there is. So there were fewer students of knowledge that went out and studied. Some of them didn't study that long and weren't steeped as you have tea. As a, as a tea bag, when you steep green tea, you put it in the, tea, in the water and you let it steep. You give it time. And that means time to mature as a da'i and time to progress in your knowledge. So there's, a, there's a, a lack of maturity and a lack of knowledge. And the evidence for that is we've seen countless. That, that's why so many people don't like hearing Salafis and are so hostile, no matter, even if they agree, I've had enough people say, I agree with you, I like what you're saying, but you, you say Salafi, why are, why are you Salafi, or this and that and the other. The point is, is the people were not sharing the clean cup of water and really focusing on Dawa. And unfortunately, and this is an African proverb, an old friend of mine shared with me who was Oromo, which is one of the big tribes, maybe the biggest tribe in Ethiopia. And he said that when you are aiming your gun or pointing and accusing someone with this one finger, the other three are pointing back at you. And so what we've had, we've had people who've went around, uh, and I've known countless of them, and perhaps at one point, no doubt I was influenced and infected, but I was not one to go out there like that. And I was just trying to mature in my dean and learn and clean myself up. But what I've known many people who fit that criterion, they were claiming and calling everyone Hizbi so much, but they didn't realize they had many of those very traits of Hizbiya themselves. So what has happened is there's been a cloak of Salafiyya, like a nice beautiful garment that has been worn by some individuals. And in fact, they turned out to be big Hizbis themselves. Okay, we're not talking about any specific people, but what I try to do is give people the criterion so they can see for themselves. You see, you make the tatbik. And this is another issue, is we've had people who learned some kawaid of Ahl Sunnah, but they left off other kawaid of Ahl Sunnah. And they circled themselves around particular in, uh, mashayikh, and made ta'zim and built up some mashayikh bigger than their status even. And this has been a dangerous game that has been practiced. So, meaning that many people have ruined the image of Salafia with tainting it and poisoning it with hezbiya and cloaking it in hezbiya instead of giving pure Salafia. And this is... A piece of golden advice, I asked Sheikh Suleiman or Rahali once about returning back to Yemen. This is the last time I went to Yemen. So maybe a little off topic, maybe not. But I wanted to offer this as advice in general about the Dawah. And what he said to me, he said, Khair, you're going to go to Yemen, you're leaving Medina. Because I said, hey, I want to go back. I'm working in Medina. I'm a worker and I'm doing Talib al-Ilm. I just want to sit for, even if it's a year, I'm going to take my savings and I'm going back to Yemen. So he said, okay. But he said, basically, he said, whatever you hear there, put it on the scale of the major scholars in this time. Whatever you hear, so whatever you're studying, whoever you're studying with, put it on that scale. And it made me happy when he, he mentioned, he said, on the scale of, you know, what you've learned and heard from Ben Baz, you know, as far as the tapes and whatever and the books and his students and those mashayikh that we studied with. He said, Ben Baz, he said, Al-Albani, he said, 
uh, and he said, Imam Mukbil. And that made me really happy. So, with that being the case, and I did that, and I would catch sometimes in Durus some students of knowledge, maybe I'm sitting in the dars going over some book, and the student of knowledge would say something, and I said, whoa, I never heard that, and I studied with many Mashaikh in Medina. That's, that's not correct. So I could put it on that scale. And that's the whole point of getting knowledge and getting those kawa'id and those usul and those principles. So you have some tools to be able to uh, free yourself from blind following. I know many brothers who, I, I can think of one who was a very close friend of mine at one point. We were in Damaj together and he stayed there for years. And he's still not matured in the Dawah. This many years later, he still... In fact, I can only say, because I've talked to him, and he, he cut me off some years ago anyway, because of Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli and other things. But what he said, he had no hujjah. He had only he had traits of hizbiya, of blind following. I said, hey, I looked into the issue. I looked what the Sheikh said. I looked with those mashayikh that criticized him. I bought every single book I could find on the market about it. I looked into the issue, and I made a judgment based upon that, not based upon... Oh, Sheikh so-and-so has a bigger manzil, or the brothers said this, or no, I didn't have to do that, and he shouldn't have to do that either. He knows Arabic. But this is the problem. People have been blind following and so forth. And what I would say, as far as the dawah, put it on the scale of those imams. When you look at Ben Othamin, a lot of his statements about the dawah and how to deal with Ahl Bidah and those great imams, Ben Baz, and how and how they practiced it, you'll see it different than what a lot of the, the young even young and middle age students of knowledge do. So it shows us that we're not going back to those principles and those kawaii and asul because either we don't know them or we're too afraid to go back to them or we're too afraid to go against certain individuals and certain personalities and even certain mashayikh. Because everyone has to be put on those scales of qala Allah wa qala rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that means the da'wah to ahl sunnah, da'wah to salafiyah, is based upon those principles in Aqidah, in Fiqh, in manners, in all of those things. All of those things are from... What did the Prophet Sallallahu say? And, and, and this is a, another nux we've seen with, uh, unfortunately, many, and I don't say all, but many of our brothers from the past who were giving da'wah, is they didn't have the tarbiyah, they didn't reform themselves, so some of them became major sinners, and they were still doing their da'wah and what have you, and others were just known for horrible, horrendous manners. Where's that with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah? Here's what Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, which is what, if you're claiming Salafiyyah, claiming Da'wah Ta'ala Sunnah, you need to be following. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma min shayin athkulu fi meizan mu'min yawm al-qiyamah min husnu khulq, wa inna allaha yubghidu al-fahish al -badi. There isn't a thing. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than Husn al Khulq, letting us know that it's definitely important because he said there isn't a thing. Of course, we know that means after Tawheed, but actually, Tawheed is even included in Husn al Khulq. And I will remind you if you want tafsil and details about that, go to Bin Uthaymin's explanation in Buluga Maram, the last chapter, and, and it's all on YouTube. I did the whole, pretty much, the whole, I did the whole thing. And translated a lot of those fawa'id, part of the haq of Allah, this is also part of husn al-khulq. So that's, that means that tawheed is in there. It's in the husn al-khulq. It's shamil. It's a, it's a comprehensive term. But we know that that's inclusive of manners. That's da'wah to ahl sunnah as well. So we've had people who've not been grounded or haven't been practicing and exhibiting and have spread fitna instead of spreading khair. And again, I'm not pointing out to any particular individuals. I'm just talking in general what we've had problems with. And now what we see is we see the backlash of that. Now, alham, there's a lot of Salafis that aren't with certain individuals' programs. Because it's their individual programs. It's not Dawah to Salafiyah. And we have many du'at out there around the world trying to clean up and trying to call people back to the book of, in the Sunnah. So... It's very important, sorry for making this long, is to go back to those usul, those foundations. Go back to the book, back to the sunnah, and that's going to give us 
that path and all of these issues, all these issues of being on welfare and being and gangster mentality and and cultism and how to deal with non-Muslims and be, uh, you know, fiqh all of that, it's already in Islam. And we have imams who preceded us and we have imams that are living now that we can benefit from and use and practice. And we do need more scholarship in the West, people who are from the West that have knowledge and can make fatwa about those countries because they're from there. They know the intricate details. It's not just asking a question uh, across the planet. So people take it as you want to take it, but that's real because that has not been in the history of Islam where the people just had to only rely on an alam way across the earth. There was ulama in, in the land of the Muslims. So Around the world, we have a need in every ballot. If you're in Ethiopia, you need an Ethiopian mufti as well. You need those. You need ulama of Ahl Sunnah that live in Ethiopia. And in Somalia, we already know there's enough scholars in Somalia, and in Indonesia, enough scholars in Indonesia from Ahl Sunnah and Balabat al Alm, Kathir, uh, wherever. And we need that in the West as well. We need that in Walila al Ham. We have some. Students of knowledge that, you know, in our the context of our uh, society, they're like our mashayikh, if you want to say. But we don't push them up upon a, a, a pedestal or a level beyond their ability and what have you. But they know the society. They've been bred and raised in the society. And they can uh, apply those principles and fiqh that they gained from the book and the sunnah and the minhaj of the salaf and the ulama of ahl sunnah. And they can always go back. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. But if you do know, then please share it. So this is very important for us to realize and put everything in perspective. And know that it's not about individuals. And know that yes, there are individuals who have hijacked. And there is so much infighting. And there is disgusting behavior. But you should never fight the menhad. You should learn it. So that way you know that when somebody else is going against it, you have the sword of the sunnah to deal with it. And this is something similar to what Imam Ibn al-Qayyum mentioned, that the that ilm is like a, you know, it's al-ilm huwa salah, that knowledge is a weapon, and it's cutting off the doubts of shubahad, it's cutting out the doubts of, uh, you know, the doubtful matters and dealing with it. And so I hope that that can be some toji hat and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself. Anything that I said was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.